As I recently begun to hone my sculpting skills again, I've decided to record the process. I'll be focusing on each main section of the body separately, so I'll be able to work on the details as much as possible. And for this week, I've decided to tackle on the female torso. The first thing I did was preparing my layout. I separated the main viewport into two screens. The biggest area will be dedicated for sculpting, and the smaller area for the reference I found online. When I need more space for sculpting, I can just use the shortcut Control plus space in the sculpting viewport, and it'll go full screen. Then I began to add cubes and gave them preliminary shapes and sizes and later subdivided them as I placed them. Even though I was just doing the torso, I still added a neck and head. I did that to add some kind of reference for the size of the torso. After subdividing my main shapes, I began sculpting. One tool that I like to use a lot when starting is the trim project tool, which allows me to make clean cuts as I begin to shape up my meshes. I especially like to use it to shape the sides of the head and the hips. When I start sculpting the main shapes, at first, some of the main brushes I like to use is the grab, scrape, draw, and inflate brushes, but mainly the grab brush. It's much more intuitive to manipulate large shapes at first by simply pushing or pulling. For the shoulders, I decided to mask their areas on the upper region of the chest and then inverted the mask so I can pull them straight from the sides with the move tool. I later manipulated their shapes, and this is a technique I like a lot when I want to pull a part of the mesh in an extrude manner that the grab tool can't quite do correctly because of its follow feature. When I wanted to sculpt more and more detail, I began using the remesh tool at a higher resolution, and I'll outline the main parts of the mesh with the crease brush. And speaking of remesh, it's also a very good tool to use after pulling on a mesh quite a bit and ending up with very distorted topology. Remesh will equalize the topology again. Since I haven't merged all of my meshes together into one single object yet, I decided to go on the shading menu up top and change the color to random. This helps differentiating between the different meshes. And by the way, the colors are based on how many characters the name of an object has. So if you want to change some colors, just mess around with the name of the objects, either add or subtract characters. And another tip is to use the Alt plus Q shortcut to jump from mesh to mesh in sculpt mode. This will save you time. Instead of going into the object mode, click on the other object you want to sculpt and go into sculpt mode again. When in sculpt mode, just point your cursor to the other mesh you want to sculpt and press Alt plus Q. Now the breasts is where I had most difficulties in the past. I would fall for the same mistakes many other amateur sculptors would fall for, where I would aim to sculpt big breasts and they'd end up looking like giant stiff frozen balloons stuck on the torso. It would just look wrong and embarrassing. Now I wouldn't say that I cracked the code, but I did achieve better results once I decided to approach them differently. First, I'd mask the areas of the breasts and made sure their placement looked realistic with anatomy reference. There's supposed to be a bit further apart and not squished together if I'm sculpting the torso naked. Then I'd use the inflate brush to sculpt the breasts, but what is more important to note is that the breasts aren't perfectly spherical. They're squished a little, a tiny bit, as they lay on the chest bones. A way of thinking that helped me was understanding that breasts are resting on the chest and not sticking right out of it if that makes any sense, but in any way, when in doubt, always refer to your anatomy reference. Then I tackle on the main muscle groups. I decided not to go into hyperrealism because my skills aren't quite there yet, but I decided to sculpt the major muscles by outlining them with the crease and draw sharp brushes, and later adding more clay on them either with the clay strips brush, the draw brush, or the inflate brush. The main differences between the crease and draw sharp brushes is that the crease brush will pinch the line you're sculpting on automatically, whereas the draw sharp brush won't. This means that in some occasions, the crease brush might mess up your sculpt a little if you're drawing a line near other lines since the pinch feature will pull on them and potentially ruin them, but on the other hand, the pinching feature does leave a polished look compared to the rougher draw sharp brush. It's up to you to decide when to use one brush or the other. Anyways, after sculpting the main muscle groups, I decided to join the meshes together so it'd be easier to sculpt and blend all the parts together. Once I joined the meshes together with Control plus J, I'll immediately remesh the newly merged object to even out the topology and polish it out. Now, once I was satisfied with my sculpt, it was time to quad remesh it, which is different than Blender's native remesh tool. And this isn't obligatory, but I do like to add Add the multi-res modifier to sculpt in the final details. And the thing about the quad remesh is that it is a paid add-on, but boy is it worth it. It is a very sophisticated add-on that remeshes your mesh with the amount of faces you give it and does it expertly. I decided to apply it with the X symmetry turned on and later added a multi-res modifier. The result already looked good without the multi-res add-on, but I decided to add it anyways so that I can sculpt in details in a now very detailed and dense mesh. Once the sculpting phase was done with multi-res, the model was now ready and the practice session was over. I wanted to give the model a quick pose though, so I ended up adding some bones and created a very basic armature with four bones. One for the hips, one for the chest, one for the neck, and one for the head. I then moved the bones until I got a pose and there you go. I now finished my torso sculpt. 
All in all, I would say it took about an hour and a half. Now, in no way, shape, or form is it perfect, but it's a step forward, and the key is to keep practicing, and I do enjoy recording the process. I'll also release the time lapse of the whole session soon. Let me know if there's anything specific you would like to see, or if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'll see you next time. Peace.